This is one of the strongest characters in the entire game right now. And if you master him, you can dominate game after game. Winston is the true hard carry. And we're going to break down exactly what you need to do in this video to master Winston and quickly climb the ranks. But I'm super excited to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Game Leap. Game Leap and I partnered to create a special Coach Mills course that has VOD reviews, advanced analysis, and targeted videos that are going to help you improve incredibly quickly. On top of this, the website is constantly updated with more advanced content from Grandmasters and top 500 level coaches. So if you want to improve incredibly fast and support the channel, use code Mills in the description right now down below. Now, the first thing that we need to define is what is Winston's role in a composition? What exactly is this tank supposed to do? Well, Winston has a ton of things going for him that makes him a very unique tank. First off is his mobility, allowing him to scale the high ground or jump directly into the enemy team. Winston's mobility allows him to play a very specific style called die. This is a surgical entry into the team, typically bursting down a support or a DPS character that has a low health total and using the initial pickoff to create a weakness in the enemy composition, leading to more and more kills and a snowball of the enemy team. Because of this, enemies have to be hyper aware of Winston's location, and oftentimes Winston will create a ton of space by baiting cooldowns and attention from the enemy team, and if any enemies are caught out of position, Winston can heavily punish those players by splitting off the team, diving, and doing a ton of burst damage. On top of that, Winston's Tesla Cannon provides ample pressure on the enemy supports by doing accumulation damage to multiple targets at the same time. And last up, Winston is a great character that can finish off easily any damage that is done Done by your team and any abilities that your team lands Winston is the perfect follow-up character that can confirm these kills now the problem is Winston is an incredibly hard character to master between proper ability usage and timing your engagements a great Winston can have insane impact while a bad Winston can feed and be often the reason their team loses but this guy is gonna get you caught up to speed with the first thing that you need to master bubble usage now there are three primary uses for your bubble. The first one is to create space. Winston's bubble allows your team to push up in a very similar way to traditional shields because while your teammates can deal damage through the bubble to the enemy team, the enemy team can't deal damage through that bubble. So your team has a fundamental advantage if the bubble is placed in open space versus the enemy team. On top of that, Winston's bubble can be placed at choke points or on top of key objectives, giving his team more space to work around and they are less susceptible acceptable from taking damage from the enemy. In addition to this, bubbles can be used to isolate certain engagements. Let's say you're jumping a support that is completely out of position. By jumping on a support and bubbling them, you rapidly take that space from the enemy team, forcing enemies to try and peel. However, the bubble keeps you alive, giving you additional sustain. And in addition to that, you can use your own bubble by jiggling in and out of the bubble to make the support that you're diving miss key cooldowns. Let's take Odd for example. By bubbling on top of her and moving in and out of your bubble, you can make it so that she can miss her nades or her sleep dart, and because she's isolated from her team by your presence and the bubble, she will often not be able to get peel in time if she's too far away from her team, and you're gonna be able to kill her if you dodge these cooldowns. Last up, we gotta talk about the duel, and bubbles allow Winston an additional survivability in a true 1v1. Characters that might traditionally counter Winston, like Reaper, have a hard time fighting a Winston that gets to use his bubble and move in and out of it to dodge enemy fire. A great Winston knows how to use his bubble to actually block enemy damage, but then move through it to deal damage in specific key moments. This gives Winston an advantage in almost every engagement because he can engage very specifically, play around his bubble that makes him a much harder target to duel, and at worst, once his bubble is out, he can simply leap away back to his team without getting punished at all. Now you might be saying, Mills, I keep jumping in and throwing down my bubble, and my bubble gets broken, and I get focused by the enemy team and die. Why does this keep happening to me, and how do I prevent it from happening? Don't worry, I got you covered in the adapting playstyle section, but first, you you need to master Winston's burst damage and his primal rage mechanics. 
So something that you really need to understand about Winston is his potential to burst down a target. His leap can do up to 50 damage if land directly on a target. His right click, if charged up completely, can do 50 damage as well. And his melee can do 30 damage, like the majority of the cast. This allows Winston to jump onto a target while charging the right click, hit the target with the right click into hitting them with the leap and meleeing for a fat 130 damage. This means that any squishy that is relatively low can actually get one tapped by a Winston that properly times his right click with his leap. Now there's a certain timing here because that right click or alternate fire actually has a mandatory fire. You can't just charge it forever. So you need to optimize it where you start to charge and leap and dependent on how far away the target is, you might need to start that charge a little bit sooner. While a lot of people might think you want to use that alternate fire to poke people from distance, most of the time that is not an effective use of this alternate fire. It's far better to either finish off targets that are just out of reach or use it in the combo that allows you to burst down enemies a little bit more consistently. Now, once you learn the mastery on Winston's jump mechanics and get far better at landing on the target that you're intending to, you're going to see situations where a Winston can see a target that is brought to half or low health by one of your teammates, and you're going to be able to jump in and clean up that kill really easily, throw down the bubble, take the space, and now your teammates can go and push in and help you clean up because all eyes are on you, but you're more sustainable because you have a high health total and you have a bubble that is protecting you from enemy fire. Now, a lot of times Winston gets a bad rap for being a character that is all brain, no aim. Must be a Winston main is the traditional term because Winstons don't really have to aim in the same way most characters do. Although the charge up alternate fire definitely added to that a little bit. For the most part, Winston isn't a mechanically aim intensive character. However, there is one part of Winston's kit that is incredibly difficult to master mechanically and that's the primal rage. I would actually go as far as to say the skill ceiling on Primal Rage is one of the highest in the entire game for an ultimate. The thing about Primal Rage is that you can do the act of juggling. And juggling is hitting the same target multiple times in the air without ever letting them truly hit the ground. A really talented Winston can actually juggle enemies completely into oblivion, hitting them with multiple burst fires of 40 chunks of damage, and turning this ultimate that not only keeps you alive into an ultimate that gets you kills as well. Now, in addition to this, Primal Rage can also boot people off the map, and if you get consistent with hitting multiple boops on the enemy, you can easily send them flying, especially because after you hit someone with one form of CC throwing them into the air, the second form of CC will launch them quite a bit farther because they have less directional influence over their movement. Now, the only way to get great at Primal Rage is by practice, and I would highly suggest setting up a custom game against bots that you have unlimited Primal Rage against, so you could just keep practicing booping them over and over again, and really work on your combos with the Primal Rage. A little bit of practice really goes a long way, and many Winstons don't do this enough, and with a very small amount of time, you're going to get great at Primal Raging. Now, in general, isolating a target is one of the most guaranteed ways to get value out of the Primal Rage. Let me give you this example you jump onto an Ana and you bubble her off now she does get a bit of peel but for the most part she nades herself misses her sleep and she is pretty low but you can't quite finish her off now the entire enemy team is starting to focus you and turning on you you're creating a ton of space but you have no cooldowns to get out and that's when you pop the primal rage heavily focusing the Ana who has no cooldowns and pushing her into a wall Continuously beating that grandma until she's dead before you move on to another target or get completely out of the fight. Now remember, when you activate Primal Rage, you get another leap instantly, and when Primal Rage ends, you also get another leap. This can be used to quickly transverse over the map, whether you need to touch an objective in overtime or just get out of danger completely. Having that double leap on Winston really allows you to go incredibly far. Now what you're starting to learn here is that there is a certain cycle that you could have on Winston that nearly guarantees value. You play off your cooldowns using your shield and your leap to have very strategic engagements, either just poking enemies and building up your ultimate or seeing key weaknesses in the enemy composition. If no weaknesses appear, eventually you'll build up your ultimate and you can go for a much more proactive play that gets more direct impact. And this directly leads us to our last point and the most important topic in the entire video about how to dominate on Winston, and that's adapting your playstyle. Far too many Winstons have games where some games they pop off and just carry as Winston and other games they die over and over and they don't really understand why. 
You have to understand that Winston is a very flexible tank that can play with a ton of different supports and DPS. However, dependent on the DPS and supports you have, his playstyle definitely needs to alterate. Let's say you have a Tracer and a Genji, for instance. Characters that are going to go in with you and deal burst damage to the targets that you dive. Having a hyper-aggressive dive, or a dive that just jumps straight into the enemy's supports and backline, typically will work a lot better in a composition like this, because even if enemies try to peel, they're gonna die so quickly, and even if you get focused, your team is gonna be able to clean up on your engagement, your space, and your damage. That being said, let's say in a different composition, you have two snipers, and you're trying to jump in on the enemy backline, not only are you gonna be completely isolated, you could get a whole bunch of people low, but your team can't fight follow up that damage. Now when you're caught in that situation, what do you do? Well, the thing about Winston is he doesn't have to always dive mega aggressive. In fact, the majority of the time, it's actually improper for Winston to do so. Winston has the capability to just walk up to the enemy and start applying pressure. He doesn't use any cooldowns yet. He still has his leap ready to go, and he's just applying pressure to the enemy team. Now, of course, as enemies start to focus him more, he drops that bubble and still applies pressure to the enemy team. But as his bubble breaks and enemies start to focus him more, he jumps back to his team. Now, the entire time he put pressure on the enemy, prevented them from pushing, and he generated a lot of ultimate charge that he can use later on. Winston becomes that source of space creation, in a very similar way to non-dive tanks when they just occupy space. He doesn't jump into the enemy team because he will just simply die without his team being able to follow up, and unless he sees a very key opportunity, like his sniper hits a body shot that he could easily finish off, or an enemy is out of position completely, he's not going to full commit to anything and instead play a much more passive style because he doesn't have DPS or supports that can follow up a full commit dive. In addition to that, there are some characters that are very brutal to a Winston simply just jumping in alone. Let's say Winston, for instance, even Brig, or characters with large amounts of CC, like Roadhog, for instance. These characters are very brutal for a Winston being caught without any cooldowns, and it's important for Winston to still create space and pressure, but err on the side of caution, waiting more for opportunity, and not committing to anything very directly until there's a key weakness that is spotted. In that way, you prevent yourself from getting farmed by a lot of these characters, you play keep away because many of these characters cannot chase you down very easily and you play off your cooldowns so you're never caught without them and you guarantee that you get out without dying. Now of course regardless of the composition you're up against if your team has momentum Winston is one of the best characters to capitalize on that and that's one of the reasons why Winston is so powerful. He can flip on a dime from defensive to aggressive. All of a sudden he's backing up away from a fight and slowly giving space but an enemy is weak in the back line and he shifts straight from defensiveness to aggressiveness capitalizing on that weakened target. And great Winstons will be able to transition from a defensive or passive playstyle to an aggressive one on the fly, truly knowing their limits and what they can get away with without getting actually punished for it. As the last thing I want to stress is that Winston can really abuse the high ground in a way that most characters cannot. Not only can he contest high grounds by jumping up and directly fighting enemies rather than trying to route through some high ground stairway or navigate to the high ground, but he can also play the high ground and fall down on enemies, giving him extra options as far as engagement is concerned. Imagine an enemy is walking through a choke point with a high ground and a Winston just drops on their back line. Now they have to all of a sudden turn around for the Winston, peel for the Winston, and all their attention is divided, giving your team opportunity to get kills. And that Winston never actually used his jump, so he could easily jump in more to finish off a target or jump away back to that high ground to safety. There's tons of flexibility with this character and the carry potential on him is so huge because his flexibility to play in any team composition, his adaptability to play against a majority of compositions, the fact that you have tons of skill expression and carry potential, and the fact that you can finish off a ton of kills with huge amount of burst damage, make Winston one of the best carry tanks in the entire game. But in my game lead course, I actually VOD reviewed a Winston player and showed you many of the things that you could be doing incorrect. So if you want to master this character or check out the rest of the course, check it out right now using code mills in the description down below. Hello.